Welcome back to Black Enterprise Business Report. Cakes come in all shapes and sizes, but one blissful baker makes them almost too beautiful to eat. And correspondent Shannon Lanier knows her secret recipe. Shannon? Caroline, our Entrepreneur of the Week isn't only an artist when it comes to baking cakes. She's also mixing up all of her talents to create sweet success. It's a simple treat, a cake making business that started early on for Margot Lewis. My mother would, would bake and I loved to decorate cakes. I said, bake them, I'll decorate them. And she got me to do a cake for a friend for a wedding. It was amazing and the woman paid me. $75 at 12 years old and it was on. Now Margot's elaborate treats range from $250 to more than 10,000 but growing the business to that level took a vivid imagination. I chose to go in at a couture cake design level. Um, I found myself wanting to really focus on design and execution uh, as opposed to um, the cake slicing. But I also understood that in this business you must follow design with amazing taste or your clients will not come back. I wanted to publicize the cake and just talk about how wonderful they are. They're not just beautiful, which you wow. find many times, but they're delicious. This is amazing. Ah. Her Brooklyn, New York company, Cake Bliss, became so popular it helped Margot expand her brand into an event planning business and a restaurant called Miss Dahlia's Cafe. By design, they all complement each other. People come, they're excited about the cake. They see the, what is happening around the cake and we're able to communicate to them, look, we do the beginning and the end. We can design your event, your party, bring your vendors to the table. Um, it's amazing. The ingredients to expand her empire, which cooks up a quarter of a million dollars annually, requires a mix of creative financing. I've never really made that much money in a standard job, but what I did was I was able to acquire property um, early. My strategy is not to sell them off to use the proceeds, but there is a level of equity building that goes on. And in that refinancing, um, there's a window, you know, and if you're careful and you make smart investments, you can use that equity to open a new business. Like her newest venture, a floral design company. Well, working here with Margot, can you say tidal wave? When things come in, they come in forcefully. All of a sudden, Margot gets an idea and we have to roll with it. Oh, I think we are good. One of the biggest skill sets I've learned from that is if you are not the expert in that area you're bringing to the table, then you need to find the person who is. That's the most important thing in the world. So basically, you're like the contractor for your business. The contractor is king. The contractor, it works. It means that people um, can do more if you trust the people you have working with you to do and be creative and don't um, limit their creativity. So unless I have to stop, you know, put out a fire, I let my designers do what they do because it's really important to give people, you know, the, the opportunity to express that creativity. It's the creativity of all her companies that thrills clients and makes everything Margot whips up worthwhile. So it really comes down to the experience. That is what makes me happy. That is what I look for. Um, people having a wonderful time and a wonderful experience. Thanks, Shannon. If you know a small business owner who could be our next Entrepreneur of the Week, contact us on Facebook or Twitter. Now it's time for Quick Tips, your exclusive guide to help you get ahead. Hello, I'm Neil Brown, CEO of Amsala. We make luxury wedding dresses. If you want to enter the apparel industry, here's some advice. Respect your margins. Make sure you price your product properly, then never cut your price to increase sales. If you can't sell your product at a price that lets you be profitable, get out of the business. Up next, the lovely art of belly dancing. <laughs>